Welcome back. We're talking about interpreting confidence levels. And this, again, is the place where sometimes people will make lose some significant points on the AP exam. So we want to make sure that you get this early and get it right, or get it right and get it right early. So um, to interpret the confidence interval, when we're talking about an interval, it's saying that if we take many, many samples and calculate a confidence level for each, about blank percentage, so whatever your confidence level is, 80%, 95%, etc., of them will capture the true proportion or mean that you're looking for. And then make sure you include the context here. All right? So that percentage talks about what percentage of the sample with the, con with the um, confidence intervals will capture that true proportion, in our case, for what we're doing now, um, as many times, you know, that many times percentage wise. Okay? So it's not saying it's going to, it's not a probability, it's not all that other stuff. It's just saying this is what's going to happen. So um, we're going to go from there. Right? So it's just kind of describing the process. For step two, margin of error. And again, this is just interpretation. We're going to talk about um, calculating margin of error later. As the confidence level goes up, the margin of error goes up. And the reason for that is, is to catch more, to have our samples, many, many samples. Because remember, we're going to take many, many samples. Not just many samples, but many, many samples. To really say that we're taking lots. Um, to be able to catch that proportion or mean in our net, in that interval, if I want that number to go up, we have to start casting a bigger and wider net. So that's going to allow us to do that. Now, the way that we can combat, combat that is to make that interval narrower. If we increase the sample size, that's going to allow that margin of error to come in tighter. So we're going to get better data. Why? Because remember when we did back um, sampling distributions and stuff, the larger the sample that um, curve of what was going on got tighter and tighter and tighter, okay, because the standard deviation was getting smaller. And again, we're going to go through all the math of this in a future video. And then for three, the margin of error accounts only for the sampling variability, all right? Oftentimes, that error, the, sw the swing on both sides of your um, point estimate, you know, sometimes people will think that it will take care of things like non-response and under coverage and response bias. And it's not going to take care of that. You still have to have a very, very good um, sampling technique in order to be able to make this work. The only thing that it does is it just takes care of the fact that if you take samples of 25, you're not going to get the same average, same mean over and over and over again. Okay, So those are the main keys up here. For our example, we're going to go to the PE department. Um, there is a PE teacher at a large high school. He wants to estimate the mean of, actually it's not a, yeah, yeah it is a PE standard. Um, estimate the number of push-ups at the school to do in one minute. So he randomly selects 30 students um, who are there for after-school sports practices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they give you a confidence interval. They give you an interval, et cetera, et cetera. So go through, do the interpretation, and um, answer the other questions. And come on back, and we'll check your answers. All right, so the first question was interpret the confidence level. This is going to come back from what we did here first, okay? So if the PE teacher takes many, many samples and calculates the confidence level for each, about 90% of them would capture the true mean number of push-ups for the students at the school. Now you might be asking, then why are we doing this? That's giving us an idea of what could be plausible, in this case, numbers of push-ups that people could do. Okay? So it's just one number that we're going to look at. And we're going to talk more about how we use them later. But just I, you're asking the right questions if you're asking these questions, okay? So now the question is, what would happen to the length of the interval if the confidence level were increased to 99%? So again, that's kind of talking about what's happening in number two. If he wants to be more sure of all of his many, many samples to capture the true mean, he would have to go up to 99%, and that would mean that you're going to interval would be wider because it increases the margin of error. So that means you're going to get a wider net, you're going to capture more, but because of that, you have to have a wider net than that. That works. Okay, and then for part C, how would a 90% confidence interval based on a sample size of 200 compared to the original interval? Because remember, up here, he only did 30. So if you went up to 200, if you increase the sample size, the margin of error goes down because it's going to tighten everything up. And so that means the new interval would be narrower because increasing the sample size decreases the margin. Okay, and so again, when you're answering these, remember, it's not just enough to say what's going to happen. Please make sure that you say why things are going to happen. So describe one percentual source of bias. Ooh, we're pulling things back from other chapters, Mr. Hayes. That's not fair. Wait until you get to the AP exam. It's going to put everything all together. Um, anyway, so what's one of them? 
he's he's only talking to the kids who are after school for sports practices. That's it. That's not going to be any good. What happens to the kids who who are athletes who aren't there? Or who, what about the kids who don't participate in after school sports? So it depends on what he's looking for because here he mem- remember he says the mean number of push ups his students at his school can do in one minute. So again, it is going to be under coverage. He's missing parts of the population. So anyway, hope that makes sense. Questions are you can put down below. I've got to go fix a couple of things before I run off to class. I hope everything's going well. Talk to you soon.